If Crystal Creations and the new gemology skill had you as interested as a cat who's found a perfect ball of wool, then you've come to the right place. We're going to look at the new gemology skill, including both crystal cutting and crafting jewellery, and also dive into the powers that the 27 crystals in the game have. But first, the basics. Crystals can be cut or made into jewellery using the all-in-one gemology table, which costs 650 simoleons, and cutting crystals or making jewellery using this table is the main way to train the gemology skill. The ideal mood for this skill is being focused, and being in the ideal mood while training it will help you to level up faster. Also know that a second way to train this skill is by purchasing and reading gemology skill books. And a side note is that if you plan on doing lots of gem cutting or jewellery making then it can be worth making your sim like gemology, as this will provide them with a happy moodlet when engaging with the skill. Note that a higher gemology skill level will only unlock new gemstone cuts and jewellery designs. The powers that your creations have are solely based on what crystal is used meaning that you can essentially get jewellery that has some of the most powerful crystal effects very early on. When it comes to choosing a crystal or metal when cutting or crafting, know that the gemology table will let you use both common and uncommon varieties even if you don't own them, but understandably not having them will see you incur a steeper cost. When it comes to rare crystals and metals though, you'll need to have found the actual crystal or metal before you'll be able to use it as a part of your creations. Now let's take a look at cutting gemstones, and this only requires you to choose a gemstone cut and a crystal, with more cuts available at higher gemology skill levels. At level 1 gemology you can create spire and cabochon shaped gemstones, at level 2 you'll be able to create emerald cut gemstones, and then at level 3 you can make seed shaped gemstones. Unlike other gemstone cuts which will be coloured by the crystal used to make them, seed shaped gemstones will always have the same bluey purple colour scheme, and these can actually be planted to make a crystal tree, which sadly takes a rather excessively long 7 days to fully grow. Once grown every morning at around 5am this tree will produce 5 crystals that you can harvest, and the higher quality your crystal tree is the rarer the crystals it produces will be. A normal quality tree will only produce common crystals, nice and excellent quality trees will produce common and uncommon crystals, and then finally magnificent and perfect quality trees can produce common, uncommon and more importantly rare crystals. Once you reach level 4 of the gemology skill you can create pear shaped gemstones, at level 5 you can make brilliant cut gemstones, and then at level 6 you'll be able to make one of my personal favourites being star shaped gemstones. After you reach level 7 you'll be able to create skull shaped gemstones, which are another favourite of mine. Then at level 8 gemology you can make heart shaped gemstones, at level 9 plum bob shaped gemstones, and then finally at level 10 gnome shaped gemstones, which are actually pretty huge compared to the other gemstone options. Like the original crystal somehow expanded before being cut but also I'm not complaining. While looking at cuts while streaming I ran a few polls, and the results were that the gnome shaped gemstones were the undisputed favourite, followed by the skull, the star, then the pear, then the plum bob, and then and the spire, after which came everything else, just in case you were interested, though I will flag that this came from a relatively small sample size. It's important to know that a cut gemstone's power will have an area of effect, while on the other hand a piece of jewellery's power will just impact on the sim who's wearing that piece of jewellery. And with that it's time to look at making jewellery. For this you'll need to choose a jewellery design of either a necklace, ring, bracelet or earring, and more designs will become available at higher gemology skill levels. You'll also need to choose a metal and crystal to be used in the creation of your jewellery piece. When crafting jewellery, metal is only important in terms of the colour scheme or visual look of what you create, but the crystal used will determine the power of the piece of jewellery or the cut gemstone after it's charged on the crystal grid, which we'll talk about a little later, hence the choice of which crystal you use is much more important. Though also know that sadly if your creation comes out botched then it'll have no powers. The jewellery designs available available come in sets, each consisting of a necklace, a ring, a bracelet and an earring. At level 1 you'll be able to make the most basic jewellery set, which is the only set that doesn't have a crystal component and thus is purely cosmetic. 
Also at level 1 you can make the chunky jewelry set as well as the raw jewelry set, and both of these are decent but nothing insanely cool. Once you reach level 2 you'll be able to create delicate jewelry, and at level 3 lunar goddess jewelry, which is one of my favourites in terms of design and fits quite well thematically with werewolves. Once you reach level 4 of the gemology skill you'll be able to make eye jewelry, which kind of gives Egyptian pharaoh vibes. At level 5 you can create the bling jewelry set, and then at level 6 the mystical jewelry set, which I feel suits spellcasters quite well. Then if you love plants and nature then at level 7 the botanical jewelry set becomes available. Once you reach level 8 you can make the Edwardian gothic jewelry set, which to me is a nice fit for vampire sims, and at level 9 you can make the starry sailor jewelry set. The name makes me think of Sailor Moon, which then makes me like this set more. Then finally at level 10 you'll be able to make the plum bob jewelry set. Yes, it's so very sims. To wear jewelry simply click on it either from your inventory or in the game and select to wear it with either your current outfit or every outfit. And you can also gift jewelry to other sims too, which generally sees them change into it right away. Additionally if you like someone and you want to put a ring on it, then when you have a crafted ring in your inventory you'll be able to propose with a crafted ring before selecting the ring that you made. And this can add a very personal touch to the big moment. Then if you don't have any interest in the jewelry that you craft then you can sell it for some simoleons too. Now cut gems and jewelry will only have their powers come into effect if they're charged on the mystical moonlight crystal grid, and this small object can charge up to 7 gemstones or pieces of jewelry placed on it at once. Jewelry is charged by the power of moonlight, and so it'll only charge from 7pm through the night to 7am and when the grid is placed outdoors. Additionally the phase of the moon in the lunar cycle will influence the speed in which your jewellery charges, with it charging the slowest during a new moon and it charging incredibly fast during a full moon. Another cool thing to note is that you can pop the mystical moonlight crystal grid in your inventory and whip it out anywhere, which is particularly handy when visiting the hidden worlds of the Forgotten Grotto and the Sylvan Glade, as well as 6M and the Magic Realm, as in these areas you'll even be able to charge up your jewellery during daylight hours. Once fully charged a crystal's power lasts for two full days before it'll need to be recharged, but keep in mind that while gemstones will lose charge while being out in the world, wearable jewellery will only lose charge when worn, meaning that if it's used with outfits that your sim doesn't wear all that often then it could remain charged for much longer. Now let's look at all of those crystal powers that come into effect when a crystal has been turned into a gemstone or a piece of worn jewellery that's been charged on the crystal grid. We're going to start with the 11 common crystals. Alabaster will see a sims angry, embarrassed, sad and scared moodlets clear much faster, and from my testing they'll clear at 10 times the usual rate, which is kind of insane. Sit try and see sims randomly find simoleons doing things around the house, though admittedly I didn't find this to be hugely impactful. Emerald makes it so that career and school chance cards are more likely to be successful. Jade allows your sims to find crystals while doing things around the house, though personally I struggled to really find crystals this way. Then orange Orange Topaz has multiple effects. Firstly, sims will gain creative skills around 25% faster, for example painting, writing, instrument skills and more. However, know that this is tied to the inspired moodlet that this crystal provides your sim, and if this isn't powerful enough to put your sim in an overall inspired mood, then you won't get the increased skill training rate. Orange Topaz will also make your sims be more likely to make masterpieces, they will also never experience writer's block, and additionally they will take longer to burn out when engaging with creative activities. Peach will see a sims relationship with family members increase at a faster rate, and additionally it'll help your sim to clear their angry moodlets a lot quicker. And from my testing these angry moodlets will clear at 10 times faster than usual. Quartz will enable a sim to gain double the usual satisfaction points when completing both wants and aspirations, and you'll also get double points from clearing fears too. Note that presently I'm finding that it's bugged in terms of giving double points from aspirations though, so I hope Hopefully that gets fixed soon. Rose will allow sims to get over breakups faster by clearing negative moodlets associated with them at around 10 times the usual rate. Additionally it'll max a sims social need and also stop it from decaying. Keep in mind though that taking off the jewellery will see your sims social need go back to where it was before they put it on. Ruby sees a sims embarrassed moodlets clear faster, and from my testing they'll clear at 10 times the usual rate. Additionally your sims will not have uncomfortable romantic 
interactions, and they also won't have awkward woohoo encounters. We love that for their love life. Sapphire will see a sim gain mental skills such as logic, fishing, and many more 25% faster. However, know that this is tied to the focused moodlet that it provides your sim. And if this isn't powerful enough to put your sim in an overall focused mood, then you won't get the increased skill training rate. Additionally, Sapphire will make it so that your sims take longer to burn out on mental activities. Turquoise will see a sim gain their charisma skill around 25% faster. However, again, know that this is tied to the confident moodlet that this provides your sim. And if this isn't powerful enough to put your sim in an overall confident mood, then you won't get the increased skill training rate. Turquoise will also make it so that your sim's friendly interactions are more successful. Okay, that's the common crystals done. Now it's time to move on to the 10 uncommon crystals. Starting with Amazonite, this will allow sims excavating in Selva Dorada to uncover rarer and more valuable artifacts. Amethyst will see your sim's energy need recharge 25% faster while sleeping, and it also gives your sim a chance to wake up with an inspired moodlet. Prandestein makes sims easier to convince and more likely to lend you money, meaning that gifting jewelry made from it to others can be a low-key evil thing to do. Diamond makes sims less likely to develop relationship fears. It makes them have less romantic relationship decay with other sims, and additionally, it'll make it so that sims always succeed when apologizing in bed. So generally, it's great for your sims' love life, and this makes it a nice option for an engagement ring as well. Fire Opal will see sims become more successful with their romantic socials, and they'll also complete dates more successfully. From my experience, when on a date, completing goals will just see the progress bar fill up a little more than usual. Hematite has potentially one of the best effects in the game, as sims will be unable to die from almost any death, though keep in mind that they can still die from old age while under the effects of charged hematite. Just be careful because you really don't want to think that you're safe and risk death only to find out that your jewelry that was protecting you had run out of charge. Moonstone will see your sims clear their board moodlets 10 times faster than usual. Now this is pretty cool in itself, however this crystal also has additional effects on the occult sims of vampires, spellcasters, and werewolves. Firstly, it'll make a vampire's thirst decay slower, and from my testing, it'll reduce the thirst needs decay rate by around half. Then spellcasters will never fail their spells if they are in an uncharged state, and their their fail rate will be cut in half when they're in a charged state. Finally, if a werewolf sim makes use of a charged moonstone, then their fury will increase at half the usual rate, and additionally their werewolf rampages will end 5 times faster. Nitalite will make it so that your sim's energy need will decay at a slightly slower rate, and additionally an alien sim's powers will recharge faster once they're depleted. From my testing, an alien power that took around 4 hours to recharge only took about 2 hours with this crystal active. So so essentially your alien sims powers will recover twice as fast. Shino light will significantly increase the chance of your sim giving birth to twins or triplets. Then simonite will see your sim gain work or school performance faster. And sims will also complete homework faster as well. From my testing using high school homework, this allowed my sim to complete it about three times as fast, which is hugely helpful. And now with the uncommon crystals covered, it's finally time to look at the six rare crystals. Alexandrite will see a sims once refresh more often, and generally I found that they'd refresh every couple of hours with this gem's power active. Amber will stop a sim from failing a wide range of interactions, and will also make it so that sims never start a fire while cooking. Additionally, provided you have seasons, it'll make the weather become sunny. Jet allows your sim to summon the Grim Reaper at will. Literally, you can bring him over for a cup of tea or whatever you want. On top of this, Jet makes it so that you'll always be successful when pleading for another sim. Sims life. Jonkbalist will completely fill your sim's fun need and stop it from decaying, though know that taking off the jewelry will see your fun need go back to where it was before you put it on. Jonkbalist will also make it so that 10 smoothlets clear faster, and from my testing they will clear 10 times faster than usual. Plumbite makes it so that all of your sim's needs slowly increase over time, literally allowing your sim to pretty much just have a perfect mood all the time. I will flag though that unconventional needs, such as a vampire vampire's thirst or a mermaid's 
hydration doesn't seem to be affected by the crystal. Additionally, Plumbite will make nearby Sims gain a plus one happy moodlet too. And finally we have Rain Bores, which makes Sims less likely to develop fears, which is hugely helpful considering how annoying fears are. Additionally, Sims will gain all the benefits of the Brave Reward trait which costs a very hefty 8,000 satisfaction points. Sims with this trait won't mind being near supernatural beings such as ghosts or skeletons. And they'll also be less likely to become scared and additionally clear scared moodlets faster too. Now just a quick reminder that when fully charged, jewelry or gemstones will have two days worth of power. So remember to keep recharging your gemstones or jewelry as needed. Also if you plan on doing lots of gemstone crafting then I would recommend aiming to complete the crystal crafter aspiration. Should you complete this you'll gain the attuned reward trait which has two rather awesome benefits. Firstly it makes it so that jewelry your sim wears will remain charged for longer and fully charged jewelry that would normally remain charged for two days will instead stay charged for three days on sims with the attuned trait. Then on top of this you'll also be able to absorb energy from charged crystals. Performing this interaction will drain a charged crystal's power and see you replenish a chunk of your sim's energy need and additionally you'll gain a plus one happy moodlet that lasts for eight hours. It's also worth knowing that there's an eight hour cooldown on being able to absorb energy from a charged piece of jewelry too. And that's a complete guide to the gemology skill as well as a look at all crystal powers and effects. If you enjoyed or found this helpful then please Please subscribe and leave a like, I would really appreciate it, and I hope you have an amazing day. See you later!